How's everybody doing today? And as you can see, we're going to be rebuilding the Milwaukee Brewers. So a team that is going to be definitely contending for the Central. They got obviously that MVP candidate in Christian Yelich. A couple other decent looking players for the future. So if you guys want to see some more rebuilds, make sure you hit the like button down below. Subscribe if you're new and enjoy the content. And as always, in the comment section, let me know which team to do next. So we're getting into it. And uh, no contracts and everything else should be left alone we're going to control everything as we do in our rebuilds so let's quickly take a look at the contracts and then also the team as a whole because there, there's one contract in particular that i just don't like and that's ryan braun and i know he's he's been a brewer his entire career but there's, that's a player i'm looking to trade away just because his contract is so bad and he's not going to be a good overall to help us out too much longer so he's probably a player that i will trade everybody else's contract isn't too bad um canes is not too bad he usually holds his rating pretty well um but then yeah everybody else eric thames is probably another player i'd look to move just because five million for a player who really just offers home runs isn't isn't a player i want to keep around so let's quickly take a look at the team when we look at the starting rotation there's definitely some areas i want to upgrade brandon woodruff should be okay Peralta should be okay for the future. Jimmy Nelson's hit or miss. Sometimes he does well. Sometimes he does very poorly. Corbin Burns is a poss possibility for the rotation. But there's really nobody who I'm like completely sold on. I, I could move every single starting rotation, starting pitcher for a new one. And I'd be okay with that. Um, so we'll have to see how things go. Relief pitchers, it all depends on if they do well or they don't do well. If they do well, we'll keep them. If not, we could definitely see some some changes in the bullpen. Josh Hader is really the only pitcher that I'm like fully um, like confident in keeping. That's like, that's really about it. Yasmani Grandal is a player I'd be cool with keeping for multiple seasons. I know his contract expires this year, but he may be a catcher that I tried to bring back. First base, probably going to look to find a new one. Jesus Aguilar is, he's okay, but you know, with C potential at the age of 28, 29, he may end up decreasing. Second base, we have Moustakis, we have Keston Hiura. Hiura, um, I, I don't know how to say his last name, but Keston, I kind of want him to start at second base. So when Moustakis' contract ends at this at the end of this year, we'll probably let uh, Keston hop into that second base spot. Travis Shaw is not bad. Um, he usually hits bombs like consistently for the next couple seasons. Um, and I know I said I didn't really want to keep Eric Thame, Thames for that specific reason. But if there's no other third baseman available, um, maybe we keep Travis Shaw or we keep Mike Moustakis and move Moustakis to third. It, it kind of just depends. Orlando Arcia, ah, like I know he's supposed to be really good. I know he's supposed to develop, but I'm not sold on Arcia. I think he's a player I'd be okay trading for a better shortstop. Left field, we're definitely going to need a new left fielder. Center fielder, we have Kane, and we also have Corey Ray, who could develop. And then in right field, we got Yelich. So we're good for basically the entire rebuild with Yelich. So that's that. Let's make a couple trades. See you guys in a sec. Alrighty, Caden Lemons, Bubba Derby, and Eric Thames are going to be traded for Christian Walker. I think in more of a bench bat, um, since we are losing Thames' power. Um, this way, we can also kind of have a backup first baseman in case Jesus Aguilar doesn't really pan out. Um, Christian Walker really isn't the long-term solution, but just in case Aguilar like falls off for some reason. Mauricio Dubon, or Dubon, Dubin, whatever his name is. Birch Smith and Ryan Braun are going to be traded for Michael Brantley. I know he's kind of the sim same age and rating of Braun, but he usually holds his rating for a couple seasons. He's going to play left field for us. Um, he's on a very similar contract as well. So it's basically just getting one year shorter in terms of contract. And it's actually a little bit smaller of a contract as well. It's 16 million compared to like 18, 21. So we'll be saving a little bit in terms of salary as well. So it's not necessarily getting younger, but at least it gives us a little bit more consistent hitting left fielder. Alrighty, season one's gonna look like this. Um, it looks it looks decent. Christian Walker obviously is a little bit lower rated because he's not a starting first baseman, like a everyday starting first baseman. Um, we do have Keston here at second base. Hernan Perez and Manny Pena as our backups. And then when we look at the pitching rotation, it looks okay. I think this is the biggest area we need to find like replacements for. Like Gio Gonzalez isn't long term. Woodruff could do well. Peralta could do well. Chassin, Jimmy Nelson. It, it it just I'm not really comfortable with this. And I feel like this is gonna be the reason why we're gonna do very poorly for at least this season. So let's get into it. Let's see how things go. I'll see you guys at the draft. 
Season one's draft went very, very well. Eli Arias is our first pick. 70 overall, pretty solid with 89 potential. The next one, Samuel M McGill, 88 potential. He's 71 overall. So we got back-to-back -back picks, really solid. We also have an 83 potential with Giancarlo Gill. And then we also have 83 potential with Pedro Acevedo. Very solid draft. I'm happy with the way it went. At the deadline, I'm thinking about just completely clearing house on the pitching staff. Almost every single player is doing poorly. Even Josh Hader is doing poorly. I'm going to keep Hader. But one of the trades we're going to be doing is Corey Knebel for Ryan Presley. Um, he's actually having a very solid season. He's locked up for the next couple of years. It is a big contract, but he could be our closer. He can be our setup guy, depending on where I end up putting Hader. Next trade, Robbie Erlin for Jeremy Jeffers. It he's Jeremy Jeffers is just not having a good season either. Like a 6.19 ERA. Um, we're going to go for the lefty who's more of a long reliever who could help us out in the bullpen. All right, Tucker Newhouse, or Newhouse CJ Hinojas, and then Jimmy Nelson for Caleb Smith. I don't think I've ever traded for him. The uh, Marlins starter who's actually at the Yankees now, but his stats aren't bad. He has a decent ERA. And Jimmy Nelson is just performing so well, or so poorly, actually. Not well at all. Poorly. So we're just gonna we're gonna trade him as well. Mike Mustak is Ben Gamel and Devin Williams for Miguel Sano. Um, I'm gonna I'm thinking about moving Travis Shaw um to second. We'll see how that goes. Um, and then move Miguel Sano to third. I'm the long term, it's more for Keston to move up to second base, but for now. I'm going to let me move the lineup around and I'll show you guys what we're going to do with it. Okay, so after a little bit of looking, Miguel Sano can play first. So what I'm thinking is we're going to move Sano to first. We're going to keep Shaw at third. And that allows Keston, Hira, Hira, whatever it is, to play at second now. So that's the lineup. That's what we're going to do. All right, so season one went very, very poorly. You guys can see here 70 and 92. Um, we had in a league leader. I think it was Lorenzo Cain had the most hits. Um, but outside of that, nothing too crazy. Um, when, when we quickly look at some of the the big performers in the team, Kane was good. Yelich did well, but I know his morale is going to be going down because of his contract. Also, we played very poorly. Um, but uh, Yelich did well. Brantley hit pretty well as also, so 281 there. And then basically everybody else hit pretty poorly. Not Grandal. Grandal hit 268. Keston hit about the same 260. Um, Shaw hit, I think, below 250, about 250. RCA hit like 230. Um, Snow hit close to 200. And so did Jesus Aguilar. So, I mean, hit or miss really on in the lineup. And then pitchers. Gonzalez had about a 350 ERA. Woodruff had like 37. Uh, Corbin Burns had about the same. Uh, a 43, that's not close to being the same. That's actually pretty high. A 38 for Chassin. And Caleb Smith had a 3-7. The bullpen, Freddy Peralta, a 5. Erlin had like a 4.5, so things didn't really go well for him. I might move him into this, like the middle relief. Claudio had like a 5. Um, Jacob Bur Barnes had a 3-7. Uh, Junior Guerra had a 5. Taylor Williams was like the star of the bullpen this year with a 2-5-9. Josh Hader was just above a 3. And then Ryan Presley was about a 1-5. So just poor all around um we do have a couple other pitchers zach davies and brett Suter, brent Suter, who we could call up if necessary if we don't find anybody in free agency but outside of that besides Corey ray no one else to really look forward to the nationals defeat defeated the astros let's get into it um things just just did not go well this season um and i mentioned that just pitching was the big question mark um if we can bring Grandal back for an okay contract, I'll definitely offer it to him. Um, I guess we'll do that. The other two pitchers I'm not interested in. So we'll just we'll skip that. And then 40, oh, not 40, man. Uh, arbitration. Uh, uh. Yeah, so it'll be everybody up to, I don't even think I'm bringing back Jesus Aguilar. So I think Wilson and up will get it. And then contracts wise, everybody should get one just because the players here aren't players I want to lose. To start season two, we're getting 
Adalberto Mondesi for Orlando Arcia or Orlando Arcia and Joe Gray Jr. Basically, I just wanted a better hitting shortstop. So that's that's the acquisition we made. We also brought in Willie Calhoun as a bench bat. He develops very, very well in franchise. I don't know about real life, but in, in franchise, he does quite well. We brought in Carter Caps just in case we need another bullpen arm throughout this this the year. And then we brought back Yasmani Grandal. And then there was one more player that I brought in. Oh, Luis Acevedo, a B potential 70 overall second baseman. Good contact stats, good speed, good fielding already. So for the future, he could be a decent little addition for the squad. Everybody else um, was already here. So yeah, that should be about it. When we look at the, the, the prospects, we won't look at them right now just because they're the same as when we drafted them. So this is how we're going to look for the start of the season. The bullpen is still a big question mark for me. Um, I'm not too sure how things are going to go, but I have faith in it for now. We might make some changes as the season progresses, and this is how we're looking um, to start the year. Christian Walker will be moved out once we actually start the season because he won't be a DH. But So for now, this is how we're looking. I mean, the lineup looks good. You know, We definitely have some really good bats. I do want to move uh, Mondesi kind of in this two spot, maybe have Brantley be a lower lower option in the lineup but i think this is this is a good looking team now um offensively and that's always been the issue with the brewers in real life the pitching so we'll see how things go if we need to add more pitching we definitely will but for now this is how we're going to look to start season two season two the draft went it went pretty solid we got raymond diaz second baseman at 57 overall um another key one is anthony maldonado a catcher 58 overall with 83 potential and then we had a couple 70s, Omar Rivera, who's 70 overall, uh, Atkinson. So not terrible, not not as good as season one, but not terrible. Season two, we won the division 96 and 66. We're taking on the Mets and uh, no league leaders or anything. But let me tell you, the pitching rotation stepped up this year. No one's ERA was like amazing. Um, actually, Corbin Burns at the all-star break, he had like a mid three. So that's that's a huge improvement. And Peralta was actually one of our lower one. He had like a 3-3. So it looks like his second half of the season struggled a little bit. But overall, the, the starting rotation really improved. Brent Suter, okay, eh, you know, eh. Alex Claudio, maybe a player I look to trade um, next. Actually, no, maybe, maybe we just let him walk. Um, Alex Wilson came up. He did very well. Taylor Williams was okay. Not as good as last year. Last year, he pitched very well. Um, Jacob Barnes did pretty well. Presley did very well, a low whip, uh, which is awesome to see. Erlin looks really good, pick up kind of as a setup man. And then Hayter is looking a lot better in that closer role. When we look at the actual lineup, you guys can see how everybody did. Mondesi hit 282. Awesome to see that one of our additions, our, our, our additions to the team did well. Um, let's see. Yelich is doing okay. Won a little bit better numbers. I mean, actually 38 home runs and 100 RBIs is really solid. Uh, Travis Shaw's doing better. Miguel Sano's developing as well. Yasmani Grandal's hitting a little bit low, but you know, good home runs, good RBI numbers. Keston's up to an 81, and Brantley hit almost 300. So I mean, in the last year of his deal, he's still looking like a really solid pickup. And then, you know, we got we got these guys who were who were okay. We'll take a look at some of our players that we drafted. Eli Arias was one of them. He's already up to a 74. Ooh, Jesus. Okay. Um, Phil Bickford was already here. I know that. And it looks like he got some, some game time this year. Hmm. Okay. We got Hauser. And then I think Acevedo was a player. Or no, Gill was a player we drafted. So he looks decent. Acevedo's there as well. A um, couple other names down here who have developed kind, kind of quickly. And uh, looks like they could be helpful. Acevedo grew three overalls this season, which is which is great. We, could, we have that you know, that extra infielder to use. And then who else? Who else? Who else? Oh, center field. McGill is up to a 73. So contact wise, he looks pretty solid already. And then we got Corey Ray, who's up to a 73. So, so far, so good. Let's see how this post season goes. Ooh, facing elimination. Alrighty. So, you know, tie series. Let's, let's see how we do at city field. We're going to let Caleb Smith go. I saw Ben attendee already. Ooh, Kane starts us off with a home run. And then Travis Shaw makes it 3-0. Okay. 4-0 to start the game. So they added Ben Attendee. 
and it looks like the rest oh Romine as a catcher but it looks like everybody else is you know pretty pretty normal for the Mets lineup so let's see how things go here we do have that four nothing lead so okay four two lead so so far so good Caleb Smith is doing quite well I know he's got kind of like mid mid 70s low 70s stamina so I definitely got to be careful with him okay we make it a five run lead uh, I was gonna do a sack fly but we have two outs so with this low stamina I definitely want to keep an eye on it that's basically what I was trying to say um one out we got a double let's hit five innings he's done well but he he is a little bit low on the stamina so what we'll do is we'll pinch hit we're bringing Calhoun to get the sack fly and he does what I needed him to do perfect all right let's go to pitching change let's go to we got a string of lefties let's go to Suter perfect just what we needed him to do Ooh, a walk let's steal second error sack fly all right we got that five run lead i'm pretty comfortable with the way things are looking as i say that we're in a little bit of a, a tricky spot but he gets out of the inning so heading into the eighth and the ninth we definitely want to make sure we close this game out bases are loaded i really should have paid a little bit more attention to that um presley's gonna come in we're just gonna do our job there all right first and second no outs it's double play of course one run comes in pinch hit let's go to walker First and second, base is loaded. Oh well. Oh well. Um We'll go to Barnes since we have such a big lead. There's no point in going to Hater. As I say that, we're we're gonna we're bringing a we're gonna bring in Hater to close the door. So we advance, we advance, which is awesome to see. Um I do need to move Caleb Smith down a, a couple spots for the rotation. But let's get into it. Let's see how this matchup goes against the Dodgers. And is it? It's three to us, and we advance, and we're taking on the Yankees in the World Series. Okay, so I need to boom, boom. I might leave Peralta down there. It seems like everyone's kind of struggling. So let's let's do this against the Yankees. Okay, we might get swept here. We won a game. We do we do lose there, but that's okay. We made it to the World Series Season 2. It looks like we have a playoff MVP, Yasmani Grandal. Okay, 333 with 4 home runs and 15 RBIs. Not a bad year. So let's get into it. Let's go into the offseason exclusive negotiations wise. Uh, we might have a couple. Yeah, we do. We do. Um, Robbie Erlin for sure because it's looking like we found his spot as like a setup guy. So we'll do, we'll do three. Kind of bring this down a little bit. And then Michael Brantley, he's done well. It says he's going down. You know, let's do a year if he's kind of cheap. Yeah, five mil for a year. We definitely can do that. We'll let Hernan Perez walk. And then let's sim to the next stage. And then looking at arbitration. Do we want Travis Shaw one more year? I think we could do one more year. And then I think everybody else is going to get it. Basically, everybody was part of the squad this year. And then contract wise, everybody should get a contract. All right, we're going to go Donnie Hart, Alex Wilson, and Marvin Nichols for Cam Bidrosian. I'm looking just for another bullpen arm, um, especially since Wilson's getting a little bit older for season three. So that's really about it for the season, I think. Um, the bullpen or the starting rotation's gotten a little bit better. Uh, the bullpen, a, a little bit better in terms of just like the ratings have actually gone up. I'm actually going to switch Barnes and Bidrosian, and we're going to go like that. I lied. We're going to put Earl in there because he did really well in that spot. The lineup, the only thing that's changed is Hernan Perez is no longer on the team. We, we signed this guy purely based on his hitting stats. I don't know if he's actually going to hold his rating. I don't. I really don't know. He was one of the better shortstops available. So we'll have to wait and see. But the actual lineup looks really solid. Um, in terms, just It looks really good. Just everyone looks like they can hit the ball really well. Um, their ratings are going up, so I, I, I'm comfortable with the team. We'll have to see how season three plays out, and then if it goes poorly, then we'll just have to make a bunch of moves. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is Lorenzo Cain's last season, too. Oh, he's got one more after this, so if he does poorly or starts to decrease, he might be a player I trade, I trade, but overall, I like the team. I think we're looking really solid, so let's see how season three plays out. Season three, we won the division once again, 98 and 64, taking on the winner of the wild card. So let's see how things played out. With the leaders, we had the most doubles with Mondesi. 
Um, 51, that's a good, that's a pretty big number of doubles. Zach Davies won a gold glove. And uh, let's let's see how pitching went. So Peralta kind of cooled off at the midway point. So the trade deadline, he was at like a, a two two eight. So like something bad happened. Caleb Smith's looking really solid. Woodruff under three, which is awesome. Burns and then Davies. Okay, um, Suter's looking a lot better in that long relief role. I don't think I'm gonna keep him, but overall not too bad. Erland's kind of struggling. He was struggling in the the setup role as well. Uh, Taylor Williams is struggling a little bit, but overall, I'm pretty happy with the way the bullpen is looking. Lineup wise, you guys can see Lorenzo Kane still just hitting the ball so well at the age of 34. So he, keeping him one more season, I don't think is going to be a bad option. Uh, Sano, 239. I mean, 24 home runs, 82 RBIs is almost identical to what he did last year. I'll give him one more year because I think he's got... Oh, he's a tough one. He's a tough one. I don't know what to do with him. Michael Brantley did solid, um, amazing stats. Uh, Grandal hit 300, which is awesome. And then Keston hit 240. Like, hmm, we got Willie here, who's hitting the ball pretty well. Hmm, we'll have to see. I know some of our prospects are really growing. Eli Arias is up to a 78 already. Really, the only bad stat he has is his case per nine. He already looks really solid. Um, Bickford. Is another player who's who's growing pretty quickly. We got Hauser, Brown, uh, Small, Acevedo. You know, we, we got names that are coming up, so we'll have to keep an eye out. Uh, we brought up Luis Acevedo. He hit 226. Um, not terrible. Not terrible. Raymond Diaz is up to a 61. Urseg's a 73. Terang a 73. These are probably two players I'll probably end up trading for a little bit better prospects, just because I don't know if they're gonna feature. We got McGill and Ray here. McGill's up to a 77 already. He could be a player by season five for sure. He could take over for Kane. That, that might be the option. He takes over for Kane. Um, so that might be the move. So let's see how things go here with the playoffs. All right, we advance pretty easily. Um, we are not having Davies take on uh, Kershaw. That's his name, Kershaw. I don't want him taking out Kershaw. So let's see how things go here. We need one win, guys. Oh, man, we're going to game seven here. So quick manage it. We are home at, what is it, Milwaukee? What is it, Miller Park? I believe it's Miller Park. I should know that. It's Miller Park. So let's see the Dodgers lineup. They have Mora at third. That's a new name. Uh, but everything else looks the same. It's a good start for us. We got a double with two outs. Hit by pitch. And then Brantley comes in with the three-run bomb. All right. Solid, solid stuff there. He gets out of that, that jam there. So it was only one run allowed for the Dodgers. Let's see if we can add at least another. I feel like another is like what we need for sure. And then, all right, Smith is done. We're going to go to, I guess we'll go to the lefty right now. All right, so tie ball game. We got a double to start it. I want Suter to go one more. Do I? Yeah, I want Suter to go one more. So let's, let's see if we can like bunt him over. We do sack fly. Oh, really? All right, that's unfortunate. A double though with one out. Can't, can't, can't capitalize on that. One run does score. Another run scores. Suter's done. So we're down two, unfortunately. They're, oh, we're down one. Even better. Come on. A walk. Pinch hit. We're going against a righty. This is Calhoun's time to shine. He strikes out, of course. Of course. Alrighty. Nothing happens, really. All right. So we're bringing in Presley. We're bringing in Presley. All right. Pitching change. We'll go to a lefty here. And Claudio. What? You couldn't get the out, so we're down three in the eighth. Okay, we're down. Can we get something, anything? First and second with one out and a double play. Are you serious? You're going to let AJ Pollock go deep? So we're down four here. I mean, it's not looking promising, and that's the season. So we lose it in the NLCS. Man. So the Dodgers win. Let's, let's just keep going. It sucks. It sucks to lose it right there. But maybe maybe we do need to strengthen the bullpen a little bit more. So exclusive negotiations. Wait, it said Kane. 
Oh, we got to exercise. This. Okay, he had an option. All right, cool, cool, cool. Presley's been pitching well. I'm cool bringing him in for at least one more year. The thing is, he's going to be a bullpen arm. So let's see if we... I'll bump it up to eight. I know it's a lot, but Travis Shaw, he's been doing well. And third base options, I think this is the year Chris Bryant hits free agency. So what I'll do, I just... I don't know if we can afford like a Chris Bryant contract and still be able to like do much else. We'll let him walk and we'll see if we can get somebody a little bit cheaper. Alex Claudio pitched a little pretty pretty well this year. We'll do two years. Um, Sano, we'll keep we'll keep with the Sano train. We'll we'll see if we can keep him going. We'll go we'll go three years for Sano. Bedrosian pitched you know good enough. So let's do that. And then Pina's the backup. I'm not too worried about that. We'll we'll just do one year. Boom. All right. There's that. That took a little bit longer than it should have. So let's simulate all the way to the next stage of free agency. Arbitration. Really the only one that I don't think I'd give it to is we'll let Carter Caps walk. And then contracts. Everyone's a rookie or minor league. So we'll give them the, the their contracts. Alrighty, season four, the big addition to the squad is Noah Syndergaard. Outside of that, everything's basically the same. Taylor Williams and Robbie Erlin are kind of on my like my, my possible trade list. I also looked in bringing like um, one of our prospects up, Arias. He drops down to like a 74 if we pull him up. I really wanted to get him involved. I think he'd be a really good long relief spot like what Suter's doing. Um, I also looked at Bickford, but his stats really aren't that much better if they i don't even think they are better than Suter. so for now we'll leave Suter in that long relief role unless he's like doing terrible and then we'll find somebody else um another like thing i'm keeping my eye on is mcgill i really think he's going to be ready next season so he'll take over for kane um, we brought up Corey ray as kind of a backup and then willie calhoun's gonna start this season but if he doesn't do well then we'll trade him because he's kind of like our, our weak link in the squad so We'll have to wait and see how things go. Um, I don't want... We've we've had this this idea of Grandal in the four spot. But for now, I like the team. I think it'll do well. It's just my question marks are going to be with Erlin, Suter, and Alex Claudio. So kind of all of our lefties in the bullpen. I think our starting rotation is going to look really solid. Um, I think our lineup's going to do very well. It's just, can that, that bullpen hold its own? There really were no um, other additions from free agency. Uh, some of them were just some like low-rated free agents um, just to kind of fill up the squad. Realistically, I've shown you like the main uh, players to look out for for the future and Arias and McGill. Everybody else is kind of meh. Um, Luis Acevedo is looking like a decent pickup for us as well so we'll leave it like that for now i definitely think we'll need to make a move at the deadline so let's see how season four plays out actually i lied before we start this season we're gonna trade willie calhoun i just don't have faith in him and we can get austin riley who has a lot better hitting stats so we're gonna make that trade for with willie calhoun trent grisham and chad mcclanahan so yeah austin riley's coming into the squad everything else is gonna be the same let's get into the season at the deadline of season four Ma alex claudio's time is up He's just can't keep that ERA down. So we're going to go for Jalen Beeks. Very similar stats. Um, it's just his ERA is looking a lot better. So there's one trade. We are going to probably clear house on the bullpen just because that's kind of the area we're struggling the most. Look at Barnes, um, Cam Bedrosian. Even though he's got 86 overall, it's just maybe if we move him back into this spot and then maybe move like Erlin here. But I think... Uh, Barnes is a player I'm going to look to trade. And then, you know, when we look at the starting rotation, it's like it's not doing terribly. It's just not doing as good as I would like. So maybe Woodruff's a player I look to trade. Um, and maybe we check out Arias. Maybe. So let's see what we could do. Um, I'll catch you guys in a sec. Next trade is Barnes Crow for Robert Giselman of the Marlins now. And I think that might be it. Um, we're going to leave it like that. Suter is struggling. And so is Woodruff. And I know we got I got we got some prospects who could help us out. So maybe it's time for Oh no. Maybe it's time for them to, to come up and pitch. Uh maybe send down Suter for now. 
um, and just leave it like that. You know, we'll let Bigford for the like this this spot. We'll see how Woodruff does. If he does, if he continues to do poorly, then we'll get rid of him after this season. Um, we'll just we'll just trade him away, and then we'll let Arias come in. Um, everybody else has been doing pretty solid. Like the the lineup looks like they've been hitting the ball well. Besides Hura. Um, so yeah, that was. I just wanted to strengthen the bullpen. Let's see how season four finishes. So we won the division again, 96 and 66, taking on the Dodgers. So again, a tough series. Most triples for Mondesi and Syndergaard. Whew, some nice pitching. So a gold glove for Kane and potentially his last season with us, even though he's like he's he's still hitting the ball extremely well. Like unreal. Mondesi still hitting the ball well. He hits free agency this year, but I, I definitely think we'll bring him back. Um, then we got Yelich, who is going down like crazy. Whoa, at the age of 32? Really? Like, not 32, but like 30 also, which is weird. He might be a player I don't bring back. Um, okay, that's interesting. Shaw hit the ball well. Grandal, okay. Sano, finally, there we go. And then everybody else. Ooh, Austin Riley, yikes. Um, but everybody else did pretty well. Um, it's looking like Acevedo is going to give Keston, you know, a run for his money. When we look at the pitching, Peralta kind of inflated. Burns kind of fell apart. Like, what happened here? Um, Bickford did okay. And it's looking like everybody in the bullpen. Ooh, yeah, those are numbers I like. Those are definitely numbers I like. So let's take a look at what's his face. Uh, McGill, because he's definitely a player... He'll probably be low 70s if we call him up to the majors. I don't know if those are starters numbers though, but do we bring back Kane for a year? It says he's going down in rating, but like he just hits the ball so well. And we also got to worry about a new right fielder. So we may have to figure something out there. Um, pitching, I think we're set now. Um, it's the lineup that I'm worried, a little worried about for next season. But let's see how the Dodgers series goes. We get eliminated first 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 go at it so unfortunately we haven't been able to make it back to the world series since that one attempt and uh we're gonna need some some contracts it looks like but let's let's keep it going exclusive negotiations presley it says he's going down i'll think about it Tr travis shaw he's he's hitting the ball well you know what? For a third baseman, I'm cool with giving him another year. Um, I offered him like 10 last time. Let's see if we can get him with 10 again. Um, and I think I'm going to let the rest go and see if we can get anybody else. I almost quit. Um, so let's, let's see what we got here. We got to add all those guys. But arbitration-wise, ooh, we got Modesty another year for arbitration. That actually works really well. Everybody's going to get one. Um, and contracts everybody's getting one too season five we made some big additions um jose ramirez has joined us at third base for a five-year deal he looks like he's going to be a really good batter for us as well as tyler naquin so two indians joined us um this year luis acevedo is going to take over at second for keston just his hitting stats are a little bit better than keston's so that's why we're doing that also samuel mcgill is an 83 he's going to be batting um, or he's actually gonna be our starting center fielder. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's how it's going to work for now. And then pitching wise, you know, the, the start, the rotation is the same. I might look for a trade for Woodruff. Um, and then we also added Felipe Vasquez as our closer. We're going to let Hayter be the setup man for now. Um, unless for some reason it does say he wants to be the closer, but I feel like it'll be good. It'll be good for now. So Arias is also making his debut. I want to see how he does in this long relief role. So there's the squad. I might, I might. What does Bickford look like? It's just his stats really don't look that great. And if I call him up to the majors, I don't think he's better. Yeah, he's not. So I might make a trade to get a new starting pitcher. If not, that's how we're starting the season. Alrighty, we're going for Casey Mies, Casey Mize, whatever it is. We're, we're trading for him. Brandon Woodruff, Raymond Diaz, and Bob Campos are going to be traded. Raymond Diaz is kind of the big piece in this. And I, I wouldn't trade him if this wasn't the last season. But we're, we're getting Casey Mies, Mize, whatever his name is. That's the new addition to the starting rotation. 
that's the lineup everything else is going to stay the same let's get into season five all right we finished the season 101 and 61 so it went pretty well it went pretty well league leaders rbis for jose ramirez tyler naquin had the most hits and jose ramirez had the most runs and Syndergaard had the most wins awards samuel mcgill was the rookie of the year and a cy young to freddie peralta really okay so let's take a look and see how things went for the squads uh a three okay Syndergaard pitched very well peralta won cy young i mean it makes sense why solid solid season casey struggled a little bit casey struggled a little bit corbin burns okay and then arias eh, i mean not terrible um he obviously his stats are only going to get better we moved Caleb Smith to this spot because he was struggling a little bit and it's looking like a player that would need to be moved on. And then the bullpen. I mean, these three really struggled, which is a little worrying, <laughs> like really worrying. Um, the lineup. Let's see. McGill hit 321 homers and 77 RBIs in his rookie season. Holy cow. He killed it. And then when we look at the rest of the squad, I mean, Naquin hit 30 home runs, Grandal almost hit 30, Walker almost hit 30, and he was, wait, he's playing right field instead of Riley? Um, I mean, which whatever worked because, I mean, we won a lot of games. We look like a really solid team. I mean, I liked what I saw from the team. When we look at some of our prospects as well, we got Hauser here, who's not really a prospect anymore. Um, we got Small, Herrera. Where's that? Gill guy there he is 73 uh let's look at the rest of the squad mm, ursegs an 80 terang's a 76 center field i mean we, we basically got most of our prospects involved when you look at what's coming up uh hyra is a free agent so you'd have to worry about him uh but no amandis he's a free agent so you'd have to worry about him Riley Peralta so there are some names hater so there are definitely some names you'd have to look out for maybe make some trades to free up some uh salary space but for the most part I mean you're 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 locked up with the the key components of your squad so that's not too bad but let's see how things look for the playoffs we, we gotta advance right there we go we're taking on the Phillies let's get this this all sorted up um We'll try that. We'll try that. Let's see how things go. Game one, we win. Two, we win. Ooh. Ooh, elimination. Let's do it. Come on. This is to get to the World Series. We can't throw this one away. Citizens. No, that's not right. Yeah, Citizens Bank Park. That is right. All right. Syndergaard's going to take the mound. Squad's looking, looking good. Let's see if we can get something started here. A walk. Ooh, he's got some speed, too. It's caught stealing. All right. Looking at the... Philly's lineup, it looks the same. Just Baez is at short instead of Gene Segura. Uh oh, the run scores. Okay. Alrighty, come on. We gotta get it back. We we gotta get it back. Like, come on. Two now, really. Alrighty. So no, Grandal, Naquin, anybody? Wow. Six runs here. That that might that might be the uh the nail in the coffin. Syndergaard's done. He's done after six. But like we only have one hit. Like that's the issue. Like we're just not getting hits. Um, so I feel like we're kind of in a, a bad spot because we're we're just not doing well. <sighs> I went to the lefty lefty matchup, it didn't work out. <laughs> Oh man, this one's this one's done. Season's over. Ten, 11 nothing. We had two hits. Two hits. Oh, what happened? What happened? Like that lineup should not be putting up two hits. Like I'll even show you the calendar. Like we were putting up like 22 runs against the Braves, 11 runs against Pittsburgh here, 8 against Philly here. It should have been a lot better. Should have been a lot better. Unfortunately, we weren't able to make it to the World Series. We had one World Series appearance throughout this rebuild. I mean, the team looks good. Little better management, probably contracts wise. Like uh, closer Felipe Vasquez wasn't really the best pickup, um, but 
we'll have to see how things would play out. So overall, I think the squad looks nice. I think Samuel McGill at center field is a really good pitcher for the future. But overall, I like the team. I like what we did here with the Brewers. And I hope you guys enjoyed the rebuild. If you did, make sure you hit the like button down below. Subscribe if you're new and enjoy the content. Leave a comment what you guys thought about it, who we should do next. And I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.